Like if G-O-T-A-P, you know. Rise. <laughs> would you please, uh, would you please join us? I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, please join us with a flag salute. I've asked, going to ask Ms. Julie Spivak if you would uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Feel, feel free to come to the podium. You can even take your mask off so we can hear you. That'd be great. Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. And if we could have the uh, roll call, please. Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cusworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? I'm here. There you go. <laughs> Director Huffer. Yes. All right, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, for those who just caught up, uh, Director Holt is online with us this, this evening. Good to have you with us. Uh, so do we have any, well, actually we got the special presentations for us. I was looking at spies from the public. So this evening we've got the Global Adult Community Center and uh, Mr. General Manager, are you going to introduce them, or are they just like going to dive right in? How are we going to do this tonight? I think as a special presentation, we're going to pretty much not go to Rochelle. We're going to dive right into Patty, the supervisor over there at the fabulous GAC. <laughs> yes. Oh, see, it wasn't on. <laughs> Mike McAdam, um, coordinator of the Global Center. Um, Julie Spivak, director of the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program. Sarah Dodd, director of the Alex Fury Teen Center. And uh, Jay Dodwell, coordinator, is out there somewhere in Zoom land. Huh? We just can't see him. Okay, next slide. Uh-oh, my phone's talking to me. Oh, no, it was my watch, actually. <laughs> Siri. The City of Thousand Oaks and Conejo Recreation and Park District have had a long-standing history of partnership and collaboration which has allowed us to enrich the quality of life of the teens, adults, and seniors in our community. Next slide. The Global Adult Community Center has always been and continues to be a gem in the community for our seniors. The Global Center is more than just a building for our seniors in the community. It is a place where they can socialize and be with friends. They can continue to learn new things and have fulfilling and meaningful experiences. Next slide. It has been an unmanageable year for our community and the world. At the beginning of the pandemic, when everything shut down, we canceled all of our programs except for our senior nutrition lunch program. As COVID numbers improved and we were given guidelines on what we could offer, we had to think outside of the box on how we could provide programs to our seniors and still keep them safe. We rose to the challenge and following the following is some of the special programs we provided outside of the many Zoom programs we have been offering all year. Next slide.
Now I give you Mr. Mike. So since the tail end of January, we've been able to welcome the County of Ventura to offer a vaccine clinic at our location. And through the end of April, they've been able to give out 34,725 shots. That's not appointments, that's actually bottoms in seeds shots in arm. So um, they are, they have become almost an extension of staff. Um, we love hanging out with them, joking with them. We get advice from them. We are actually the only location they have in the county where our staff is on site doing other things. So we've become a de facto phone bank for them and answering questions about vaccines more so than they can get in any other location. So as much as we are excited as opening our doors and getting our seniors back in for our regular programming, we're actually gonna miss them when they're gone. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, but we are getting a lot of shots out there and a lot of help out there. Um, and one of the next slide, um, you can see by all the comments here on the site that a lot of people are actually tagging us on our social media. And um, so we were able to take off of their sites and tag it again through ours. Um, but, you know, vaccines complete, Super easy, super fast, love the staff, everything. So people are really, really um, appreciative that we were able to provide this service um, in conjunction with having the facility and being able to partner with the county to do it. And um, next slide. So one thing um, that this last year has taught us is that the um, center is invaluable and that our seniors miss us based on the phone calls we get from our patrons on when are we gonna open? When are we gonna play bingo? When are we gonna come back to class? Um, so it truly is um, just a memorable thing that we get all those conversations with our seniors on a regular basis, and there really is no place like Global Center. Oh, Toto. Oh, Scarecrow. There's no place like Global. There's no place like Global Center. There's no place like Global Center. There's no place like Global Center. <laughs> and I believe that brings us to Julie Spivak. <laughs> the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program was created to pro provide an opportunity for adults 55 plus to use their life experience and skills to meet local community needs. We have all had to adapt to the new realities facing us this past year and the impact it has had on our lives. During COVID, many of our volunteers have not been able to volunteer at the places near and dear to their heart, but there are those, regardless of the situation, that gave even more of their time to ensure that our seniors after. These senior volunteers delivered and served meals, created Zoom classes and seminars, prepared income taxes, kept our gardens beautiful, tutored remotely, grocery shopped for other seniors, and created handmade items needed at local agencies. We are so fortunate to have these volunteers in our community. Next slide, please. On January 13th, 2021, CSVP carried out our annual wellness fest, drive through style. CSVP staff, advisory council volunteers, and global staff handed out 400 goodie bags filled with current wellness information from 30 local partner agencies. 400 free lunches sponsored by the Reserve of Thousand Oaks were also distributed. It was wonderful to see familiar faces and get to chat with our seniors who were thrilled to attend an event, even if inside their cars. Next slide, please. CSVP oversees the Senior Nutrition Lunch Program at the Global Center. This grant funded program through Ventura County Area Agency on Aging is for seniors 60 plus. This congregate meal program transitioned to a drive-through walk-up program in March of 2020. From March 13th, 2020 to April 30th, 2021, CSVP and CRPD staff have served 46,700 meals. Next slide, please. The Conejo Senior Volunteer Program's free income program is in cooperation with the IRS and is in its 31st year. Generally, there are six plus free tax programs throughout the county, but due to COVID complications, only two kept their programs open this season. We have had hundreds of calls per day and feel very fortunate that we were able to open and serve clients from all over the county. Our volunteer tax coordinators have spent hundreds of hours adopting a hybrid virtual in-person tax program this year. 
Beginning February 12th, CSVP began scheduling tax appointments. Clients came to two different locations at the Global Center where they would have their documents scanned to our preparers working from home. I will spare you the other 14 steps involved in this operation, but like to mention the time and hours our volunteer preparers gave to ensure that this important program carried on. With the IRS extension, CSVP transitioned to our in-person program on April 7th and will continue until May 14th. While following strict CDC guidelines and adjusting to many challenges and modifications, CSVP volunteers thus far have worked over 5,000 hours and prepared 1,500 free tax returns, bringing $1.2 million back to our community. Next slide, please. CSVP would like to offer an extra special thank you to the City of Thousand Oaks City Council for awarding us with the COVID relief grant. We are so grateful to be chosen for this grant along with other incredible agencies in the Conejo Valley. Since being awarded this grant in December, CSVP volunteers have handmade many items for Conejo Valley agencies. Some of these items include over 2,500 masks for Los Robles Hospital, the Autism Society, many mansions, food share, and the National Park Service, blankets, pillowcases, beanies, and scarves for James Storehouse, mastectomy, pillows, and stroke aprons for Los Robles Hospital, lap blankets for Hospice of the Conejo, and blanket baby blankets for Conejo Community Outreach. As our community agencies begin to reopen, CSVP looks forward to offering many new volunteer opportunities to our seniors. We are most excited to reopen our lunch program and boutique and bring our senior volunteers and senior patrons back to the Global Center. Next slide, please. Good evening, it's nice to see everybody. It was an exciting time. We were nearing the end of our middle school and high school league play where 30 teams were competing in basketball and volleyball. And then within a day it had to all end, the teen center was closed. But we thought what was for a short amount of time, over one year later, the building remains closed to the general public for drop-in recreation. Who knew the coronavirus pandemic would impact us so greatly? Similar to other community happenings, the teen center's regularly scheduled programs had to be modified or were just canceled. The summer and fall program sessions were slow due to strict guidelines and public apprehension. Next slide. As time went on and things did not open, we had to put our thinking caps on and figure out what we could offer to our patrons given the circumstances and strict guidelines. Popular classes were and continue to be mountain biking, girls on the run, art media, driver's ed camp, and Zoom classes that are science and technology based. Next slide. With the guidelines loosening a bit, the current spring session classes are filling up and teens are excited to be back in the building. We are currently working with the school district to offer our sixth grade teen tech day in June via Zoom and have a golf tournament for middle and high school students the end of May. Summer program rosters are looking great again, though our ever popular sport leagues, dances, and special events will not be offered until at least the fall. Next slide. So what else is happening when the pandemic hit? A long overdue project of tackling the thousandoaksteencenter.com website. It was determined that 53% of the users used a mobile platform. So it is now optimized for mobile use. It also now features an exclusive class menu, parallax scrolling effects to modernize the user experience, dynamic video-based backgrounds, and it's faster, cleaner, and easier for you to navigate. Since the new website launch, we have seen an increase by 47% for visitors. Coming up next, we will be adding page-specific QR codes. Next slide. Also during some slower days, we focused on our most popular locations of the building. That, it skipped a couple slides for some reason. There we go. Um, we focused on our most popular location of the building, the game room. An ongoing issue during normal operations was too many teens and too few video game systems. So we expanded the gaming in the west side of the room. 
we added four 4K smart TVs, each with their own Xbox systems, removed cabinet doors, and added lights and diamond plating. The Gaming Trust TVs were also upgraded in the middle of the room, and still to come is the next generation consoles. And I might add, Teen Center staff did all the work for those. Next slide. Unfortunately, the backyard renovation was put on hold from last summer and is now back in the permitting process. We are over the top thrilled to get to celebrate opening back up with the start of the renovation, hopefully this summer. The city completed the roofing project, which included replacement of the lobby skylights. We literally can see the stars now when the windows are clean. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, during the roof install, some flooding in the gym occurred due to a fire sprinkler. Next slide. Lemons got turned into lemonade. The building was closed, so no one missed the gym floor being damaged. And when the public is allowed back in, we will get to reveal to them the newly sanded and painted wood floor, complete with the Teen Center logo right mid-court. Next slide. The youth outreach department housed at the Teen Center has adjusted their scope of service with the Caneo Valley Unified School District to conduct Zoom groups with middle and high school students that are referred from school staff. Outreach staff also provide supervision and support for students that are struggling with school and now come to the Teen Center for remote learning. Next slide. The community-wide donation program of bikes called Bicycles for Success has remained popular. The outreach team gets bikes donated and turns them around to needy quick to needy teens quickly. Donated bikes are always needed if anyone has any sitting in their garage. Next slide. In closing, we are very proud of the upgrades we were able to accomplish during this last year and think the public will be as well. We are looking forward to our summer session fast approaching where hopefully we will be able to start rocking and rolling again because we are READ ready. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Um, just so the board knows, this is actually the presentation that will be shown at the city council meeting on Tuesday. We do an annual um, review with them on the programs that they support, These is specifically these two. So the team has put this together to be able to take it to them, and we just like to show it to you first. So with that, I'm sure they're available for questions. First of all, good presentation. Yes, thank you. Director Ling, please go right ahead. Yes, um, the, the way the rec staff comes together and thinks outside the box and makes programs like this happen is it, just phenomenal. We're very, very fortunate to have you all. Um, one of the uh, important uh, senior programs, as we all know, is bingo. And I'm noticing a couple bingo uh, events. Um, do we know, I know it's probably not under your auspices as far as the uh, revenue and so forth, but um, do we know about what percentage hit that they've uh, taken? Uh, Patty, do you know that? We've had a few um, of the car bingos, but they haven't been able to have a full bingo, the commission, in a year. So, right. I mean, what do they make in a year, Patty? Yeah, I would okay. say a couple hundred thousand dollars, Since probably. Last March, they had zero revenue um, for bingo. And so, they're trying to get that back up and running. Do they make any revenue from them? They do, but it's it's minimal. They only charge them $10 um, a person. Um, and we only limit it to uh, 50 people. Oh, sorry, to 50 people. So it's not anywhere close to what yeah, I, Bingo would get on a Tuesday or a Friday, um, get anywhere from 100 to 120 people and then on Saturday we get maybe we could get up to 140. Um, so with the only having one bingo event once a month, it only gave us, you know, 50 yeah. um, people. So, and it really wasn't um, meant for to generate mm -hmm. revenue per se. It was to provide something for the seniors to come out and enjoy Right. and to be able to get out of the house and uh, come back to the center 
um, and enjoy themselves. Yeah, but uh, we got to remember when all this is behind us, hopefully pretty soon, that um, they're probably going to have to put on a, a few extra bingo events uh, to make <laughs> up for their lost revenue. Well, you know, luckily, yeah, I mean, their lost revenue hurts, but luckily um, they have um, for many, many, many years been spending very wisely right. and haven't been spending here and there. And, you know, we've had some... Um, it, through over the years, we have had some um, commissioners that would um, want to know why we weren't spending the money because we had so much, the commission had so much in the uh, bank, why weren't they spending it? And we, they, over and over again, we kept saying, you know, it's got to be safe for a rainy day. We are spending it. We're spending it, you know, we're showing them how much we were spending. We had a 10 year um, equipment replacement plan and how much we were going to need each year for the next 10 years. And we couldn't just go and spend all this money because what were we going to do the next 10 years to replace all the equipment. And um, the majority of our commissioners um, agreed, thank goodness. And um, so we had, they, even though they, they took a hit on revenue, they'll be fine and they'll start up again. And hopefully in July to, start making revenue again. Last year and this year, uh, we have, we put um, uh, a stop on our, um, on what, what's the, in our budget? Can't think of the word. They, they call it my secret list of toys, but um, it's <laughs> the, um, minor yes. and, uh, Yeah, so we didn't buy like, you know, they're so good to us. We can say we want, we need this many computers. We need a new sound system. We need a new projector system. But we didn't do that last year, knowing uh, what was coming up, and and we're not doing it again this next year. So mm -hmm. while they did take a hit in revenue, we're not spending as much either. Um, so that hopefully next fiscal year we'll be able to get back on. Thank you, Patty. Mm -hmm. Yes, Director Cusworth. So my burning question is, how did the grilled cheese contest come out? Mm -hmm. Did you roll? <laughs> so I, I'm hoping that that activity is going to continue. I was very interested. Uh, I love the Global Center. I can't wait for square dancing to come back. I know all of the square dancers are anxious too. They've probably been bugging you about that, about when they're going to come. Uh, well, I think that's out in the parking lot, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're they're very happy about that. Patty, you look like you're fun. Is Patty fun? I'm she... introverted, but <laughs> <laughs> I bet that you would be a really fun person to work with. Um, I think I'll have to start volunteering when I retire at the uh, Global Center just so I can have some fun hanging out with you. I like right. costumes. So. I don't know. We'll have to ask Mike. Mike, am I fun to work with? <laughs> I come up with all these crazy ideas and then I say, Mike, make it happen. <laughs> so I don't know if he thinks it's fun. So that was your idea for him to have all the straw in the clothes and everything? <laughs> Actually... But he was the brains. Did you pick it that you were going to be the brains there? Actually, with... he came up with that. All right, Mike. Yes. Okay. I, 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 uh, I pretty much let him decide what he's going to dress like. I don't tell him what he needs to do. He, he's pretty good at that. Except for any pictures of me in a tutu. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is true. I, I think the Global Center is wonderful. Um, you know, uh, it's nice, just as you were talking about, that we have a facility of this type for our county because it's continually being used for city and county things and not just for recreation for seniors. And, you know, Julie, I think that as I've gotten older and I started hanging out with uh, older people that are actually about my age. Um, <laughs> I found that the older you get, the more interesting you become because you've had so many life experiences. And I think it's huge benefit to our city that we are keen into those life experiences for people who are so willing to share. I mean, just an incredible benefit to our city. So 
another wonderful thing for the Global Center and and the uh, meals and all the things that you do are just incredible. And uh, I guess that's all I put down here, but you know, hooray for the Global Center. I'm planning to spend a lot of years there in a few mm -hmm. years. So all right. <laughs> we can't wait. I'm glad you're there. Well, you know, one interesting thing that's happened in the vaccination uh, clinics that we've had since January, we've noticed almost every day um, the public that's coming and as they're leaving, they are so in awe of the center and they can't believe how beautiful it is and can't believe that they didn't know anything about it. And so I think once we are finally able to open, I think we're gonna be even busier than ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's wonderful. The Teen Center also, thank you, Sarah, for all the incredible work that you do there for our young people. I think it starts, um, you know, in our communities that when young people are involved, then they're going to be better citizens. So anything that you're doing to help these young people kind of manage through life is, you know, just well, well worth the time and the effort. So thank you so much. Yes, yeah, Director Lang. Thank you, Chair Nichols. Mentioning that the Senior Center, some of you may remember that years ago, prior to our uh, moving into this facility, that's where we used to hold our board meetings up on stage at the uh, Global Center. Mm -hmm. So it got a lot of exposure, but uh, you know, things have changed and the, what you have uh, as a team are doing there is just phenomenal. So thank you. Director Huffer. Yeah, I wanna first of all echo what Director Lang said. The, the programming that both the Teen Center and the Global Center has come up with over the past year plus uh, is just absolutely amazing. Um, and the, the fact that you've been able to keep the young people and the not so young people in our community engaged is, is absolutely, um, it, it, it's, it's really noteworthy. I did want to, I, I haven't had much exposure in the last several months to the Teen Center, but I can certainly speak from firsthand knowledge uh, with Patty and Mike, Julie, and all the staff at the at the Global Center, what they have done, particularly in the last three or four months, uh, is you know they, they should get some kind of special commendation. That in in mid February, when the vaccine program was just getting started and the tax program was just getting started, uh, I can't remember if it was Julie or Patty mentioned that, or maybe it was Mike mentioned that. Basically, we were answering the phones for all of those other programs along with, with what you normally had to operate. And um, I know it was driving all of you just absolutely crazy, <laughs> but uh, the, the fact that you managed to get all of those phone calls answered and, and uh, responded to uh, is, is, is pretty incredible. Um, I, I did want to ask you, Patty, because uh, as, as Director Cusworth noted, you you are the shy retiring type. I'm just wondering where you manage to store all of your costumes. Um, well, I do have a, an extra room in the house that's uh, dedicated to my costumes. Yes, and my shoes. <laughs> so thank you all very much for, for what you've done for our community. It's just absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you all so much for the presentation, but for all your participation in, in doing it. And I mean, your your passion and your uh, desire has come through and all that. Uh, I couldn't help but take a few notes as I was hearing the different things coming back. First of all, uh, you know, being converted to a phone bank for multiple programs of which you were learning about on the fly, and yet, you know, continuing to serve that role and whatever was needed. I mean, it's just a, to me, just a reflection of that organization and, and your ability to adapt and just kind of run, run with it and roll with it and realize it's just, you know, part of what you're doing. And you, I mean, you're so, so adept at what you do there and because you offer such a wide variety and serve so many people. I mean, heck, if you're dealing with teens and adults and seniors all at the same place, you got to have a special talent, you know, it just, uh, it just goes without saying. Um, but, you know, just amazing how you're kind of putting all these things together just constantly while trying to keep things going at the same time. I mean, you mentioned the city partnership, which has been an ongoing relationship that we've enjoyed for many years there and continue to see that flourishing is incredible. And then also with the county, with the vaccine program, you know, that, that they can rely on the park district, but knowing 
that they've got a facility there that's up to the game, you know, and, and really ready for that. And they no questions about that. So thank you for again, making the district and our community look good. And just to realize that you can go to one place and get lunch, a vaccine and taxes done. You know, one stop shop. I mean, you know, how many places can you do that? You know, I know Chuck was uh, actively involved with the tax part of that as well. I saw that firsthand. But as you mentioned, you know, the outreach to the community and then coming in and seeing what that facility is all about, but probably more importantly, they were impressed by the staff, I have to say. Uh, just seeing you folks and knowing what you do and how you represent yourself. And uh, and then, of course, I you know, follow on Instagram and I see the, all the live entertainment that I'm missing out on about these drive-by lunches and everything else. That, you know, that's probably worth the $3 right there is just to see the entertainment, you know. So I uh, appreciate, you know, you, Patty and Mike, especially, you know, bringing that to life and, you know, offering that little glimpse. Because I know when when things were really clamped down and things were really tight and, the only thing people could do is drive out and get a lunch. And, and you were there providing that lifeblood for them. So I appreciate uh, your extra effort. And now just to see how that's continued. And I know all of you were involved in that to some degree because of the whole staffing issue and how that kind of unfolded and just you know, being uh, uh, resourceful and making that happen. But thank you all for doing that. Um, and, and Julie, just hearing how the volunteers, you just you know, found ways to keep them involved and active because those people love to uh, keep active and to do things and it may not be the regular thing but they found something to do um, you know it's just very impressive uh, I know we've heard time and time again about the, the organization as a whole whether it's you know different centers or different programs pivoting but I would say that you know you folks were just doing that you know pivoting on a dime at a moment's notice constantly and, and just continue to be a, a jewel of the Canal Valley with with what you present over there so thank you for what you do thank you for who you are and uh, again, for making the, the, the park district look good because it's a, you know, more than just recreation, you know, it's a social services and everything else that you do over there. So thank you so much. And we all look forward to getting back to normal or a new normal or whatever we're gonna call it. But also with what you've incorporated, I have an idea that, that there's gonna be more to normal than we ever experienced before because your creativity has been unleashed. And uh, I don't think we're gonna be holding it back. So. Thank you so much for, for the presentation, everything that you've done. Yes, Director Hover. One other quick question for you, Patty. Um, if indeed the state uh, gets out of the, the whole tier system come mid-June, and my understanding is that the uh, vaccine program will be wrapping up at the Global Center at the end of June, uh, would I be correct in assuming that you and the staff there have all kinds of spectacular plans come the end of June and starting in July? Yeah, we're going to go on a two-week vacation to Hawaii <laughs> uh, beginning July 1st. No, we, uh, we are in the plans right now of looking over the building schedule and seeing what we can uh, bring back immediately based on social distance guidelines that we're expecting will still be in place somewhat um, after um, in July. So um, I assume uh, things are going to get better and and the guidelines are gonna be less, but I think that we're, we're assuming there are still gonna be guidelines for us. Um, so um, there's some programs that we're, you know, like uh, Mahjong and Bridge where people are closer together normally and they're touching the same thing without, you know, sanitizing every time. There's no guidelines for that right now, but I'm sure that there will be um, hopefully by July. So right now, um, we're, we're going to open up in tiers of different programming, programming that we know we can bring back. Um, our social services definitely is on our uh, high priority list because we have a room where we can have the providers come and by reservation um, and appointment only um, provide those services to the seniors um, in a room that, that they can social distance in. Um, we're um, hoping that we can actually bring back bingo in July. Um, it won't be as many people we're assuming that normally we do have, but we think we can offer it still. And our commissioners will be excited and so will our bingo players. Um, and then there's a matter of you know ballroom dance and um, all of our other programs. We're gonna do it. Um, it's just gonna be in tiers. We're not gonna open the front doors on uh, 
we're hoping by July 12th, we're gonna open. And then uh, we're just gonna go from there. Currently, we did open the pool room though. I don't know if you heard, you saw on reservation only. So that's going well. And they're very happy, our billiards players. Director Holt, I just wanted to give you the opportunity from a undisclosed location far, far away if you wanted to have any comments or any questions. You're, you're muted if you want to. No, uh, I'm, okay. I'm on muted now, I think. Am I unmuted? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, well, of course, I've always been proud of everything that they're doing at, at the Teen Center, but particularly the Global Center, because I've been involved in a lot of the issues and everything. Um, and um, I just applaud them. Um, they have really rallied to the cause. And so thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and with that, I see. I think everyone has had a few words again. Thank you all for being with us this evening. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to carry on, uh, but we'll continue with our with our meeting. Thank you for being here tonight. And next is items from the public. Uh, our, our, from our moderator, do we have anyone that wishes to speak uh, to the board on items uh, from the public? Okay, thank you. All right, next we have approval of the, of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve or any changes? So move. Okay. Second. Move second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, we will have to have a roll call vote. Okay. We, I, I heard her voice, but if we need to do it, we can do that. All right, I'll ask our secretary to make a voice roll call vote for us since we do have one Zoom uh, member. Yes. Director Cosworth. Yes. Director Lang. Yes. Director Holt. Yes. Director Hopper. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next is our consent calendar with the minutes and the warrants. Do I have a motion to uh, approve that? Yes, Director Hopper. I'll move approval of consent calendar items A and B. Thank you. I second. Okay, she All right, and I hear Director Holt seconding that. Okay, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cussler? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Yes. Director Hopper? Yes. Thank you. Next, we have deferred matters. First item A is the preliminary budget fiscal years 2021-22 through 2022-2023. This is a public hearing, so I'll open that public hearing. Is there anything from staff on this this evening or is this just to take any public comments? Okay, and to our moderator, do we have anyone wishing to speak on this item? No, we don't. Okay, with that, I'm going to close the public hearing and we will continue this item for our next meeting. Uh, next is item 7B, consideration of resolution uh, for landscape maintenance district. I think we've got three. Are we, should we, are we could do all these at once or are we going to do them separately? No, separately. Okay, we'll do it separately. Uh, landscape maintenance district for the Rancho Caneo, preliminarily approving the engineer's report, declaring intention to provide annual levy and collection of assessments and setting time and place for public hearing. Mr. General Manager, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Nichols and members of the board. This item is on page uh, 41 in your packet, and it is the first of uh, three different assessments. So as I said, we're gonna take these all individually. I'm actually gonna provide some generic introductory comments that don't really need to be repeated at each of the three items. So I'm gonna provide these once and then kick it over to staff for the um, each item by item presentation. Um, Kind of wanted to little set the stage as as you all know we have our packet and this is also the opportunity for the public and the members of within living within the assessment district to weigh in and um, at the back of your packet you'll see that we have had um, at the end of the item on page uh, 115 to 120 we have public communications um, including uh, something from Ms. Collins and from the Dos Vianos Ranch. So I do um, direct the board's attention there. Um, so, you know, this, 
our introduction is a little different than than maybe a normal year when we haven't had folks weigh in. And it's actually nice to have people kind of pay attention and look closely at, at what they're paying for. And it gives us an opportunity to kind of sharpen our pencils, make sure that we've got um, our ducks in a row, so to speak, and also provide a little historical context for why these even exist. And so I'm, I'm the one that's going to do a little bit of that historical, then staff will kind of get into the, the actual engineer's report along with our consultant. Um, if you remember, in, uh, as, as the district was formed and kind of merrily uh, going along, the board itself sitting here, the five board members got to set the rates of <laughs> the tax rates, um, along with all the other government entities in, in, uh, in California. And uh, as, as that uh, continued to occur going into the late 70s, the taxpayer said, we're not thrilled with the way the property taxes continue to escalate, and we're going to pass what became the landmark Prop 13, uh, followed by you know, the year or two after the AB8 funding formula. And really what that did is it said that CRPD's property tax revenues were kind of frozen in time at that time, what they were. At about one per, um, at about five percent of the one percent uh, property tax, um, and then as a footnote, redevelopment agencies we ended up getting a pass through through the redevelopment agency at the time. Um, so we that's kind of set the stage and the footing for where we were. And as the years went on, that that meant we had to kind of make do with a little less. And the park district was going forward, and things were getting tighter and tighter. And then in 1992 the education revenue augmentation fund hit and that was a time when the state was going through some really difficult financial times and it was looking for ways to basically claw back money and figured it had the opportunity then to claw back money from special districts through the eraf shifts that's what they're known as educational revenue augmentation fund shifts so the state was able to shift a portion of our property taxes back to the state of California that then re got redistributed back out to the schools because that's really now what the state was helping to fund. Um, so you'll notice it's not really at this item, but in our budget that we uh, present to you every year, we have been keeping an ongoing track of what that shift has cost the district over the years. So since 1992, over the past 30 years, CRPD has lost $48 million to this property transfer if you added it all up together. So what's a district trying to continue to provide really good parks and recreational programs to do? Um, it had to start looking really hard and really closely at new projects as they came along. And around this time, that's when both specific plan seven and which is uh, the Rancho Caneo area and specific plans eight and nine were being created. And, you know, those were privately owned, very large properties that were being master planned with uh, primarily the city of Thousand Oaks between, you know, the city and the development community and Rancho Caneo's, you know, a thousand units, give or take. Dos Finos is about 2,300 units, give or take. And during the negotiations, discussions, land use entitlement approval process, some very important things happened. You know, the park district rightfully said, hey, we're financially struggling as it is. How are we going to welcome all these new residents and provide them with services? And the developers at, the, at both those specific plans said, hey, we got your back. We're going to actually provide the land, not only just the land, but we're actually going to, you know, we're building some really awesome, great communities. And we're going to do even better than what your normal requirements are. So we're not only going to give you the land, we're going to give you a little bit more than average. And we're going to also build and main, build those parks. And we're going to establish something called landscape maintenance districts to help maintain these parks in these new communities. And so because of that, among all sorts of other conditions of approval, the city council ultimately agreed and the developers agreed and uh, lo and behold, there were approved these master plan communities with not only the parks to be built by the developers, but also a funding mechanism to be set aside. So that is how Landscape Maintenance District 92.1, 92-1 was formed for the Rancho Caneo area and 94-1 was formed for the Dos Vienos Ranch area. 
So um, as that is sort of the origin story of these landscape maintenance districts, um, I want to kick it off then to Mr. Hare, who is going to introduce, I think, our, our, uh, our new presenter for the project and our consultants. So Mr. Hare. Yes, thanks, Jim. Oh uh, yeah, tonight we have with us uh, Jim and Joanne from Wildan, who are the engineering, uh, they're the consultants who provide the engineer's report for Rancho Caneo and Dos Fientos. Uh, so that's uh, items B and C, but also uh, we have uh, Jeanette from SCI, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, the consultant uh, who does a district-wide assessment. Uh, and that'd be for item uh, 7D. Uh, they do mention, you know, uh, some of the public comments that were that, that came. They did mention they kind of touched on the district wide too. So Jeanette's, you know, is available for answering questions for for uh, all three of the items, and then uh, and Jim and Joanne uh, are also available, and they'll give a little talk of that. But um, I want to turn it over to Andrew, who got the the pleasure of doing his first assessment. With this, he's getting his little feet wet, getting some training, and uh, definitely uh, um, he's enjoyed the experience and he looks forward to uh, continuing his learning process. So I'll give it over to Andrew. Oh, wait, so right, before I Andrew, I, I apologize, I forget. Yeah, so this, this, as you remember, this item was continued from April 15th. And then since that time, I did reach out and I did speak with Kathy Emmons, who's the property manager for the Dos Venos HOA. I had a very good, uh, productive discussion with her. Uh, and I also had a uh, uh, multiple communications with Barbara Collins, who is the other person who uh, wrote the public comment to the board. So now I'll turn it over to Andrew. You sure, Don? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Th th thanks, Jim. Thanks, Tom, for kind of leading on this. Um, so kind of going back to uh, staff recommendation for this item. Um, is to adopt resolution for the prelim preliminary approving of the engineer's report for fiscal year 21-22, uh, um, declaring intention to levy and collection of assessments, um, and also setting the time and place for a public hearing to levy, which is uh, June 3rd, 2021. Um, so for Dos Vientos, we, the, um, the sorry, uh, Rancho Caneo, um, the, the change, from last year, we're looking at a, a difference of $2.66. So the fiscal year 2021 was $100.14. And we're looking, um, based on the consumer price index, um, percentage increase of 0.965 is uh, $102.80. Um, and then also note too, and the, the, our consultant team um, can kind of go through some highlights in their summary, but we did have an internal audit that they ran um, which also the, which found some affected rates. They were only the max rates from past years, and so no assessed rate changes were made as part of the audit. So no no money no, no money changes as part of this audit. Um, and so if that's I think that's that's enough information for you guys from me. So with that, we have our consultant team team here tonight. Uh, Jim McGuire can kind of give an overview summary um, of his report. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. So the, the engineer's report is very much the same uh, as previous years, except for the methodology section in which we modified and updated the um, text as far as discussion of special and general benefit uh, to make it a little more succinct and a little more understandable. Uh, it doesn't really change the effect and the outcome of the assessments in any way. It just is a uh, a, a little more detailed and specific in terms of those uh, requirements under Prop uh, 218. Um, as indicated, the assessments have gone up by uh, the CPI adjustment this year, and that's pretty good. I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have it. Okay, do we have any questions for, for Jim at this point? Okay, seeing no questions. Is there a, another 
consultant who's going to present or is that it for this one? That's it. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, and do we have anything? No, no public from the uh, Zoom world? Okay. All right. No public. All right. So any, no questions or comments from the board, either to staff or the consultant? We have no public. Okay. All right. Well, with that, then we have a recommendation before us. Did anyone care to make that recommendation? Yes. Director Lang, I saw your yes. hand first. My pleasure to make a recommendation that we approve resolution number 050621-A for the LMD 92-1 Rancho Caneo, that it be read in title only and all further readings be waived. Thank you. We have a second. Yes, Director Cusworth is a second. Thank you. I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. And just before we uh, have a roll call vote, I just wanted to remind either those that might be listening. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do that as well. I just want to remind those who are either listening now or might get the recording that there will be a public hearing on this uh, on June 3rd, 2021, where additional comments can be made and they can also be uh, submitted in writing to the park district if you care to. So with that, if you could please read the title of the resolution. Resolution of the Board of Directors of the Caneo Recreation and Park District, preliminarily approving the assessment engineer's report for fiscal year 2021 and 2022, declaring its intention to provide for an annual levy and collection of assessments and setting a time and place for public hearing thereon for Landscape Maintenance District number 92-1, Rancho Caneo Playfield. Thank you. And with that, could you have a roll call vote for us, please? Yes. Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cusworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Did you still do it? Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Director Huffer? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And so we will now take the next item. C, which is the uh, similar process, considering a resolution that this is regarding the Dos Vientos area. So uh, I think we can go right to Andrew, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right okay. Andrew. All right. Very good. All right. Continue on, please. <laughs> uh, so staff recommendation is to adopt a resolution uh, preliminary approving the engineer's report um, for fiscal year 21-22 and uh, declaring intention to levy and collection of assessments setting a time and place for a public hearing to levy. And that is June, June 3rd, 2021. Okay. Um, so last year's, last year's rate um, for the Dos Vientos assessment uh, for fiscal year 2021 was at $342.41. And um, the proposed rate is actually a decrease this year of a difference of $13.75 um, to three for, for a rate of a uh, $328.66. And so the, the decrease is due to the consultant finding 171 additional multifamily units from the previous year, thus reducing the rate per benefit unit. Um, and similar to Ranch Caneo, the consultant ran an internal audit, which uh, only, again, only affected max rates and no assess rate changes um, were made as part of that audit. So, uh, and once again, um, Jim, Jim is here to do a, a brief summary of, of his report for Dos Vientos. Jim, did you have anything to add? If not, we can continue on. Sorry, I'm, I, I, was un, I was muted again, so I had to unmute, sorry. Um, the engineer's report is uh, very much the same. Again, the section uh, regarding the assessment methodology, particularly with, with, uh, in regards to special and general benefit, has been updated this year to be uh, more succinct and um, more direct in terms of how the general benefit is calculated. Uh, and that's significantly the biggest change in terms of the engineer's report for this year. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, Board members, any questions or comments to staff or the consultant? 
Okay, seeing no hands, do we have a motion? There's a recommendation for staff. Director Cusworth. Um, I make a motion that we adopt resolution 050621-B, preliminarily approving the engineer's report for 2021-2022, declaring intention to provide annual levy and collection of assessments and setting time and place for public hearing and that it be read in title only and that all future readings be waived. Thank you. Do we have a second for that? I'll second. Director Huffer, thank you. And with those, uh, let's see, you could uh, go ahead and read the resolution title for us, please. Resolution number 050621-B, the resolution of the Board of Directors of the Cuneo Recreation and Park District, preliminarily approving the assessment engineer's report for fiscal year 2021 and 2022 declaring its intention to provide for an annual levy and collection of assessments and setting a time and place for public hearing thereon for landscape maintenance district number 94-1, Dos Vientos Ranch. Thank you. And with that, could we have a uh, roll call vote, please? Yes. Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cusworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Yes. Director Hopper? Yes. Thank you. And with that, we will move on to our third item, which is the, uh, again, considering consideration of a resolution. And this is regarding the district-wide park maintenance and recreation improvement district. So with that, are we good to go right thank to you. Mr. Okay. Thank you, Chair Nichol. Yeah. Andrew, thank uh, you, Mr. So Mooney. similar to the other two, um, staff is recommending to adopt the resolution directing preparation of the engineer's report, pre preliminary engineer's report for 2021-22. Uh, declaring the district's intent to levy the district-wide park maintenance and uh, recreation improvement district and providing for notice of public hearing to levy. Um, so with, with that, the, the rate change for this year, last year's rate was a uh, 39.41. Um, this year, there is a slight increase of 2.25%, uh, which is uh, 89 cents. And so the new proposed rate is $40.30 for uh, for the district-wide assessment. And um, uh, Jeanette, our consultant, is available for questions if you have any questions. Um, but with that, we'll turn it back to you. Thank you very much. And do we have any uh, of the consultants to make a presentation or available, just available for questions? Correct. All right, thank you. All right, uh, board, any questions of staff or the consultant or comments? All right. Seeing no hands, is there a motion regarding the recommendation to adopt the resolution? Director Heffer. <laughs> like to move approval of the staff recommendation to adopt resolution number 050621-C. Be read in title only. All future readings be waived. Thank you very much. And do we have second a second? Second? All right. All right. We've got competing seconds. Director Lang and Director Holt. Thank you both. So We'll let the secretary pick one of those. <laughs> and uh, and with that, would you be so kind as to uh, read the resolution for us in title only? Resolution number 050621-C. The resolution directing preparation of the engineer's report declaring intention to continue assessments for fiscal year 2021 and 2022. Preliminarily approving engineer's report and providing for notice of hearing for the Caneo Recreation and Park District. Thank you. And with that, could we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cusworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Yes. Director Huffer? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so that takes us to items for discussion, which I see none. And following that, we have new items. And 9A is budget adjustments. So is that, uh, Mr. Peter, you want to start us, up, start us off with that? Yes, and then thanks to the consultants that- Yes, thank uh, were, you, team. Yes, that were with us tonight and uh, appreciate you. And I am just gonna simply turn this right over to our management services administrator. Thank you, right. Chair Ms. and Directors. Um, so we did our mid-year review of the budget and we're doing pretty much everything along, it is going the way that we had expected. So we have a few items for you. We wanted to uh, recognize the awesome work of aquatics. They um, have generated much more revenue 
than budgeted for. So we wanted to recognize some of that revenue and give them authorization to spend some money to keep it up. So that's the first item. And the other items for the capital projects funds and the district-wide assessment, um, they're all listed there. Most of them are carryover projects that just cross fiscal years. And so the, the bill came in the next fiscal year. So we're just cha changing the money over. But um, with that, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Any questions? Director Lane, do you have a question? Um, actually, a comment and uh, congratulations to B, our aquatics manager. Um, they they always run a great program over there in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just a, a prime example of what they're able to do for our community and for the park district. So Jim and others, please uh, thank D for the work that they're doing. Any other comments, question? I had a question when it comes to CLU pool contracts, is that like contract maintenance or is that like contract uh, trainers that are, that are training the staff or I mean, training the uh, uh, swimmers? Like that? Oh, is it, that's the uh, salary. Yeah, we need to get the staff in pool. Okay. So, Okay, yeah, perfect. All right, that's exactly what I was hoping to hear. Thank you. All right, so with that, we have a recommendation to approve the proposal. Is there a motion for recommendation? Director Cusworth? Um, I recommend that we approve the uh, proposed 2020-21 budget adjustments. Thank you, do we have a second for that? I'll second that. All right, Director Lane, thank you. And could we have a roll call vote, please? Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cusworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Yes. <laughs> All right. Director Huffer? Yes. Thank you. Okay, next is item B, refundable deposit schedule and the uh, fees. So. General yes, Manager Friedel. Thanks, uh, Chair Lang. This is uh, you can detect a theme here, and uh, it the, you know we're in budget time, and so this is all about the money. So and you know how we're how we're collecting it, how we're spending it, and um, the fees that are associated with some of what we do. So um, our Recreation and Community Services Administrator Rochelle Callis is going to give us this report. Yeah, thanks, Chair Nichols and members of the board. So annually, we bring um, I, I bring to you uh, to the table to discuss uh, refundable deposit schedule and facility rental, field usage, filming fees, all of that good stuff. So we review that annually for um, all of those different areas. The last increase to deposits was made in the 2017-18 fiscal year. And then in 2019-20, we did um, an increase for facility rentals by 5%. And we did a field use fees. Um, they were increased by 15%, aligning the district more closely with the regional market prices for the in-district rate. So for 2021, we, due to COVID, we did not do any fee increases um, that year. So... Um, it is recommended that the refundable deposits and filming fees remain the same for the upcoming two-year budget cycle. The facility rental and field usage fees for the upcoming two-year bu two -year budget for year one, we are recommending no increase due to being in COVID still and, and um, just wanting to get people back into the programs. For the 22-23 fiscal year, staff would like to be able to come back to the board in um, the future to make some recommendations for a possible increase on the in-district, the base in-district rate of anywhere between 2 and 5%, which would go into effect on July 1st of 2022. This increase would address the fact that the district has not implemented a fee increase for two years. Um, despite the increase in our costs, it, for example, the staff wages and um, maintenance with everything going on. So um, staff would also like to bring um, to the board at that time when we discuss a possible um, increase, the suggested update to the board for classifications. So 
also on the, the back of the attachments in there, there are two forms, one for aquatics and one for field fees. There's different classifications that we have for how we charge people. And I'd like to take a look at that and um, make some, some suggestions um, so we can discuss that more. So the proposed action is um, consistent with the board's decision to annually review this. Um, the strategic plan, it meets compliance with the strategic plan of 1.6 and 3.2.3. .3. And with that, um, the staff is recommending to um, adopt the resolution 05062-D, setting the refundable deposit schedule and facility rentals Field use and filming fees for the Canal Recreation and Park District effective July 1st of 2021 through June 30th of 2023. With that, I'm available for questions. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for staff? Yes, Director Huffer. A, a couple of questions, uh, Rochelle. First of all, although I understand you can't give them any specific numbers, will you be contacting all the various user groups and at least giving them the range of potential uh, increases so that they can plan accordingly? Yeah, my plan would be to bring a suggestion back to you guys probably within the next six months, which would give the organizations a six month notice of anything that would change. Okay. Once and you then approve. the concern I have is that we're approving a schedule through June of, of 2023, but we don't know what those numbers are going to be for the second year of that period, I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable in, in approving the two-year um, schedule when we don't know what the second year of that schedule is going to be. So, I mean, at this point, that would be exactly what it currently is, unless you approve what I bring to you in the future. Yeah, so let me add that. So, so some of those two-year fees, there's no suggestion that they you know, change over two years, like filming, that kind of thing, I think. Yeah. So we bring the fees to you every single budget year, even though we do a two-year budget, we bring the fee memo to you every single year. We're just trying to signal, like give everyone the heads up, like you said, you want the user groups to know well in advance. So we're trying to tell the board well in advance that we want to go talk to the user groups well in advance so that beginning in July of 2022, they may see a, you know, two to 5% rate adjustment increase on the in district rate so so that's um so we're so nothing would actually be imposed unless the board approved it a, an increase so you would see a new schedule of fees that would be modified if before we would you know impose those on anyone okay so that that would be part of the resolution then that you will come back in year two, that nothing nothing will change in, until the board approves the year two fees. You have to approve the fees every year. Okay. All right. Thank you, Director Cusper. Um, one time you gave us a listing of how our rates compared to other rates around. I think in other cities or privately. Are we still on the low side for that or are we competitive? Where do we stand? So my packet here and we'll update it again before we come back to you guys. We are, as far as the in-district rate, we're low, but we're more in line than we have been. It's the classifications that we have that are below the in-district rate that are very low compared to our surrounding areas. Okay. Are, are people starting to rent the fields? Yes, yes. We are getting very busy with picnics and, um, and sports. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes, Director Lang. Yes, Rochelle, real quick. Uh, seeing the filming fees. Um, do you recall what our revenue is for filming annually? Tom, you want to take that one? Yes, I've got that information somewhere. Um, pretty much zero this past mm -hmm. year, as you can well <laughs> imagine. Um, I apologize, I, I did have it highlighted. Um, it's, it's, it's several thousand dollars per year. 
not a lot. Yeah, we just with most of the um, most of the filming we do is uh, or we have been doing, and you know, obviously, like I said, we haven't done we've done zero the past year. I think we've done one. But we'll do some small commercials or student films, uh, or uh, you know, usually like the one day thing. They're still photography, so it usually runs between like two and three thousand dollars a year, and that covers uh, the staff time to go out there and. Uh, and it, it depends on the rate we charge and depends quite a bit on uh, the impact that they're going to have. If it's a very uh, uh, benign shoot, we'll let them go out there and, and just charge them a nominal fee. But then if we have to have staff out there to do any sort of control of traffic or park patrons or they're taking away a park amenity, they'll get charged a little bit more. But so it's only a few thousand dollars. One of the reasons I even thought about it is because as Melissa knows, uh, the MRCA just discussed um, budgets and our filming during the COVID was possibly an anomaly. Um, I think our annual anticipated revenue was uh, 1035000 something like that. And to date, only after nine months, not even the full 12 months, we're already 1,300,000 plus thousand. Awesome. So somehow I think there's a market out there. It's probably never gonna be big, real big, but I think there is a market out there uh, that we can tap into. And I don't know if, and Melissa might be able to assist in mm -hmm. talking to our, our people. In fact, one of our, administrators um, uh, for MRCA was at a filming shoot while he was giving his report from his pickup truck because he was, you know, at a filming shoot that he had to be at. Okay. So there's a lot of activity, but um, somehow if we can tap into some yeah, of it. A lot, lot of that, and I just found the numbers, but lot, um, the last two full years, we had just over $9,000. And then next year we had six, just under $6,000. Um, the, yeah, a lot of it has to, we, we try to balance, and I know uh, we're a little bit different than MRCA as far as the properties that we have available for shooting. Uh, you know, we, uh, lots of developed parks, uh, and not to say we discourage it, but we don't actively pursue for, and it's really would be a Costco thing. We don't control, That's right. we, we don't get the revenue that, that from any filming that goes on in Costco, and Costco would be the one would be, I think, most similar to MRCA. Uh, but then there's again the balance of of um, uh, protecting the habitat and sure. know, what, what's going on. So no, we it's you know, the, uh, I think the days of what was Spartacus and uh, um, the uh, uh, Flaming Star and and all that from uh, past movies we've had out there are, are I mean we still we still do do some you know it's usually the major major pictures. I think the last major picture we had was uh, uh, it was uh, Frost Nixon if you remember that movie. Um, it was uh, you know, about David Frost's um, interviews of Richard Nixon, and that was that was a good about twelve years ago, and we got a good good chunk of money from that. But that's the last time we got yeah. any sort well, of. I totally forgot yeah. about Costco having its. Uh... Yeah, Costco is the one who, if if anything, they're the ones who would benefit the most. We, like I said, we it's, it's usually ours is uh, the shooting. Like I said, a, a commercial at Canary Creek North on a playground, and and and, and a lot of times it's it has to do with the. The film scout grew up here, and he goes, "Oh, that's perfect place uh, at Canal Creek North, great playground." And then they do their commercial there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Friedel, you had a comment? Y yeah, I actually have some familiarity with like the reputation and the the uh, you know what what sense folks have of uh, of the Thousand Oaks uh, area is a place to shoot. So. So the city, um, back when I worked at the city twenty years ago or something, experienced a a ton of filming. There was a lot of filming happening. So the city created one of the really more stringent filming ordinances. So to get a filming permit that would be offsite impact, like require some street use or some use that's outside a park, the city's permit process is no, I guess, walk in the park, so to speak. <laughs> so it's pretty stringent and tough. And so I think that it gets a reputation for that. And, you know, it sort of you know, because there's disruption to locals and, and our city and even our district were really responsive to the local neighbors. And so you get enough local neighbors telling you they didn't like 
having the disruption in their neighborhood from the filming, you know, eventually the, the you know, kind of the support for it wanes a little. The other thing, and I've, I've never actually researched independently, but I have heard that we're sort of just outside the boundary for like the rate that you have to pay actors and actresses to travel. You know, they, they have a union, they negotiate some sort of rate. And if you have to drive a certain number of miles outside of like their zone, then you got to pay them more. Mm -hmm. So I think we're beyond like the, the exactly. cheaper bubble. Like it gets a little more expensive to send folks out to Thousand Oaks from, mm -hmm. I guess, wherever they measure it from, Hollywood. No, you no, you're true. I have seen the map, right? We were just, just outside the bubble. Right. And then Echo and Jim were saying too, yeah, most of everything we do is 100% contained on our property. So they don't have to go through the city permit pro filming permit process. So it's like 100% on Canary Creek North or Canary Creek South. So they don't bought, they don't have to go through the city's process. Thank you. Good information. Okay. Any, anything else on that one? So we have a recommendation to adopt the resolution. Do we have a motion to do that for us? Director Huffer. Yes, I'd like to move it up, move adoption of resolution 050621-D, resolution to be read in title only, all future readings to be waived. Thank you. Do you have a I'll second? second. Okay, Director Cusperth, I have a second. If you could please read the title of the resolution for us, please. Resolution number 050621-D, the resolution of the Board of Directors of the Caneo Recreation and Park District adopting a fee schedule per district ordinance. Thank you. And could we have a roll call vote, please? Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cusworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Director Holt, are you still with us? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Weird. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That takes care of that one. So next is item C, memorandum of understanding with the Arts Council of the Caneo Valley. And Mr. Friedel. Uh, yes, this is uh, also going to be uh, Rochelle Gallant. Thank you, Chair Nichols, members of the board. So, um, we have, this is a MOU in between the Arts Council of the Caneo Valley and the Caneo Recreation and Park District. We bring it to the board. Little history, um, we've been working um, collaborative, collaboratively with the Arts Council for over 40 years. The arrangement has been successful in creating and expanding arts and cultural programs in our community and facilitating excellent partnerships and opportunities with the Arts Council and its many member organizations, which is over 40 different organizations. Staff has met with the members of the Arts Council and discussed a new memorandum of understanding, which is attached regarding the facility use. And it has been approved by the Arts Council Board of Directors already. So they already agree with the, the discussion with the attached. And this will allow us to continue to collaborate on art offerings that will be outlined in a separate programming agreement within the cultural unit. The strategic plan is met through 1.0 and 4.0. And with that, I am available for questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes, Director Huffer. Yeah, Rochelle, I'm, I'm very familiar with the, the long history that we have with the Arts Council. I, I don't recall that we've had a formal MOU with them in the past. Is this just simply to memorialize, formalize that longstanding relationship with the Arts Council? We actually have had an MOU with them, but we have been... Um, working on this update for about three, four years, trying to get it all nailed down and stuff. So there is, and it used to come to the board on a fairly regular basis, but we had some turnover and some just clarification on programming and what was going on. And so we had, I think, I believe last year we had just um, signed through that they would just continue as is until we could get everything kind of cleaned up and bring it to you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? With that, we have a recommendation to authorize the general manager to sign the MOU. Do we have a 
motion to that effect? So move. Okay, there we go. Director Holt, thank you. Do we have a second? Okay, Director Huffer, thank you. And could we have a roll call vote, please? Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cussworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Yes. Director Huffer? Yes. Thank you. Next item is amendment number four, contract for drought response and irrigation improvement. Goes Mr. Right Friel? To, right, goes right to Mr. Hare. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, Chair Nichols, members of the board. Uh, in July, uh, in uh, June 2016, we did a competitive RFP process and the board awarded a five-year contract with two optional uh, one-year extensions. Uh, over the years, we've had a few amendments which we've increased the not to exceed amount from 200,000 to various amounts, depending upon uh, we had some additional uh, funding available to do some more uh, drought response and irrigation improvements. Uh, amendment number four, the five-year term is up. So amendment number four would extend this contract another year. So it's the first of the two-year extensions and would also increase the not to exceed amount for 200 to $350,000 in order to complete some more projects. Uh, with that, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Questions of Mr. Hare? Yes, Director Lang? Yes, Tom. Um, first of all, it seems like the increases from the different amendments is 50,000 each time. Is that just by coincidence or based on the amount of work that uh, you have for them to do? Uh, a, a coincidence that it went up, but yeah, it's just uh, um, uh, Melissa's kind enough to give us enough money and we asked for it because we got a lot of work to do. So it's just, yeah, it's actually, you're, I'd even notice that. Thanks for noticing the trend there. Uh, but yeah, you're, but no, it's just, um, just money that's available to do uh, good things next fiscal year. Okay. So there's always a lot to do. Oh, yes. It's just that you're taking it step at a time. Yes. And uh, making sure that eventually district wide our irrigation and drought tolerance is under control. Yes. And then even even with that, I mean, we've gone back to some parks that we did in year one. You know, so it you know it's it's a never ending, you know, it's you know, the, the analogy of you know, painting the, the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, once we do a park, we can do them all, then we come back, we've got more stuff to do back at the first park. Now I recall Maybe it was even last year, year before. Uh, you hired a specialist. Yes, irrigation tech. Right. Yes, yeah, it's it's, that's actually been about three or three to five. I think it was my about like 2018 or so that we hired an irrigation tech. And that's but helped out a lot. Subsequent to that, didn't we hire another person for a drought or for some kind of? Maybe I'm just no. No, okay. we, we haven't. That's our only we we, we we thought about that. That would be great to have one more person uh, who was uh, um, whose whole job was just irrigation and, and, and educating some of the other other crew members at. But because the, the, the one guy we have, obviously, you, you think about it, that's a lot of work that he does, even though this it, a contractor provides us services with this and Andrew manages the projects. But then we always have in addition to uh, the crews going, the crew who's responsible for that park helps out in the supervisor, but the irrigation tech also goes and works with the contractor to make sure everything's running smoothly and efficiently. Yeah, I, I did know that the irrigation specialist was a number of years ago, so I'm probably thinking, confusing it with another organization, but... Um, wish we had, yeah, we wish we had another one. Yeah, very, very important roles and cost savings too, bottom line. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Director Huffer. Yeah, Tom, it's not s specifically related to th this this contract, but am I re recalling that a couple of years ago or several years ago, we set up a mechanism where um, some funds in our budget each year would, would be dedicated overall to the um, uh, yes. drought response and irrigation improvements? Yes, we, we do as part of the two year budget process, we, we try to, um, you know, depending on what, what's available, we will, but we, we try to dedicate anywhere for two to 300,000. We also made it a policy that any uh, water savings from the prior year um, uh, from the, the, that we finished under the budget would roll over towards this. So we're reinvesting it back into, for like we're reinvesting into the program. 
So that has a lot to do with you know, like th these budget increases that unexpected uh, additional funds are available. So let's let's do some more work. So would some or all of this additional fifty thousand be coming out of that? Yes. Budget yeah. Source? Okay. Yeah. And when one of and and in addition to, just just for your information too, in addition to this, which which not part of uh, this work, there is a budget line item that's a little bit more than this. We also have additional things that we purchase, like mulch. We don't do we don't uh, yeah, per, we have a, a separate contract which the board awarded uh, for two mulch suppliers because you after a, a few years the mulch does decompose and, and disappear. So the mulch suppliers gave us a good deal, and so we buy mulch from them, and we also buy some other. It might be some in-house equipment or some other things that we purchase ourselves, and our staff does the the service for it. And I noticed I was over at Oak Brook last weekend and noticed that delivered a bunch of mulch over there. So, okay, thank you. Sure. Yes, Director Cusworth. Um, so just to go on with what Director Heffer was saying, um, is this in addition to the amount that you normally put aside for drought tolerant response, or is this the money that you're putting this, this is part of that money. Yeah, so the money in, uh, at, at most, or, you know off the top of your head how much it is? Usually, well, how much we have this year? Typically, it's 200 or 250, and then it fluctuates depending on whatever yeah. fees are available. Or yeah, savings are so available. like, like, and I get off the, off the top of my head, I, I, I'm, um, and uh, you, you might have it there, but like off the top of my head, like like this particular year, it's going to be three, we, we have 350, but there might be 400 total in the budget. So there's an additional fifty thousand dollars out there for mulch and some additional uh, equipment and supplies. But this is the bulk of what you're. This is the bulk. Yes. Oh, correct. okay. That's yeah, th what th I was this thinking. is the majority of it because uh, this is actual con con uh, services that we contract for. Because uh, he'll you know uh, demo, in purchase and install drought tolerant planning and do some uh, major irrigation work. So I, I noticed the same as Director Lang about that fifty thousand increase. So I was wondering about that also. But yeah, it just, it just coincidence. Yeah, just he, happened to happen. Yeah. He notices um, patterns really well. <laughs> <laughs> what um, what percentage would you say goes in for drought tolerant landscape? Because I think that when you're, you know, doing the, our, our our parks are beautiful, and I think the drought tolerant landscape really enhances the look of the parks. So is a large percent of the budget going in there to make sure that, you know, when people lose all that turf, that's mm -hmm. really beautiful that we're adding in those plants. Yes. Yeah. And even like, and then if you remember we've, what we've discussed before that at the beginning, when this first started back in about 2016, uh, our goal would then was just to eliminate turf. And so then that's, so we have gone back and a very prime example would be um, uh, South Shore Hills excuse me, uh, Sunset Hills, right? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sunset yep. Hills, uh, where that one was either the first or second park that we did about five years ago. And uh, uh, the neighbors were a little bit leery on what we were doing and, and, and called for pretty much nothing out there. And then we went back uh, about a year ago and really, I mean, the place is gorgeous now. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love, I love that park. It's, it's got a great walking path and tons of, uh, tons of drought tolerant planting um, and improved irrigation. And now that the neighbors are just ecstatic of, of what we did. But again, at the beginning, sometimes we just went, okay, take out this acre, you know, and mulch it and, and fix the irrigation onto the next one. Because we had to do, we did 28 parks in like eight months and we didn't have uh, we didn't have a lot of time because it was a grant money we didn't have a lot of time to um beautify it you know and spend too much time on each park because the grant money had an expiration date on it well i'm glad you told me about sunset hills because i was specifically thinking about that park because i did have a couple of people who commented to me about how unhappy they were uh, with the uh, turf being gone and how ugly they, and then for a while they didn't want the mulch and so then it was weeds. And right. so there was a lot going on there, but I haven't been back there for a while. So um, I'll yeah. be happy to see that, but that oh, was yeah, just check something. that one out. That one's, uh, that's, I think uh, that's a primo park. I love, I love that park. Well, I think when you do those kinds of things, I mean, I think every, we need to be conscious of the drought tolerant that that really is important. And so I'm really glad to see this money going towards that because I think a big part of our parks is just going to a pretty place, 
you know, it's very meditative. It really is awakening. I mean, the recreation is really good, but it also gives an example to people about plants that um, are going to thrive in this area mm -hmm. that are drought tolerant plants. So uh, it's a good example. So I really congratulate that. Thank you. Is it, isn't that on the north end of the park pretty much? Yeah, pr pretty much that, that slope. Yeah, that, that slope was one I said, like at the beginning, they were like, don't do anything to this park. And, we, and I mean, we stopped irrigating that slope and mm -hmm. it, like, like Director Cusper said, it, a lot of uh, weedy, you know, it was kind of unsightly, but uh, the, the improvement, and then, because that was because of the neighbor's requests. And then like, again, like Director Cusper said, then the, the neighbors started going, wait a minute, maybe let's rethink this. And, and then they came back to us. And so we came up with a plan and got it done in a few months after, after they requested it. Thank you. Any other questions? Just one question. This, uh, in the discussion, it says that in, this all started back in June 2016. Was that the start of the drought response program in June 2016? Yes, it was. Yeah, in the, uh, if you remember, the, I think it was April 2016 was the, the executive order from the, the governor saying you know, we are in a, in a drought. So we had been working on this a little bit prior. And, and then again, that's, so every, like I said, that's when everything really accelerated. And that's when like the grant money became available and it just, yeah, we, it's really, the program's really taken off since in the last five and a half years or so. Okay. And I know you were so kind to send us updates on the uh, success that we've had. Will we be having a five-year update on all the savings that have occurred as far as the amount of water that we have not used over the course of five years yes, because yes. So of this program? Our, yeah, we update the water conservation plan every October, I believe. And October, then that, okay. Yeah, so that's because uh, that gives us, because we always run a couple months behind as far as the fiscal year goes, as far as getting the, the actual data. Okay. So it'll be October, so we'll be able to, uh, we usually be ready in sometime September, we'll put re the report together, but that'll give us last fiscal year how we did in the, the monetary savings. And most more importantly to us is the resource savings yes. and how many yes. units or gallons of water that we have saved. Absolutely, super. Okay, with that, we have a recommendation to authorize the general manager to enter into this uh, amendment. Is Director Lang? Yes, I'd like to recommend to allow the general manager to enter into an amendment number four uh, to contract for drought response and irrigation improvement services with FS Contractors Incorporated. Thank you. Do we have a second for that? I'll second. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, Director Holt. Thank you. And uh, with that, may we have a roll call vote, please? Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cusworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Yes. Director Huffer? Yes. Thank you. And we'll move on to our final new item, 9E, approval of approval of renewing uh, ongoing license agreements with Southern California Edison. Mr. Friedel. Um, this is uh, Mr. Harris' item okay. as well. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Chair Nichols, members of the board. I uh, have four license agreements. Uh, a couple of them are decades old. They're original ones. If, if you look at the, the, the interesting and cool map we have on page 200 and Five, um, yeah, so over at Fiore, uh, for whatever reason, it's it's the right away at Fiore Playfield, and they then they did a little sewer pipeline right over the, the, their same uh, area, and then uh, behind Los Cerritos School, uh, there's a uh, the whole parcel there. Um, we used to have just the, the trails, and then they extended it to the the, the entire parcel, uh, and then recently, about four and a half years ago, I believe. Uh, when we were developing uh, Sapui trails, we also got uh, uh, a license agreement to go use use the trail up to their uh, to their power poles. Um, it's you know the five year amounts for all of them together is about six, is a little over sixteen thousand uh, dollars from the previous five year agreements. Um, it, it, it's increased three percent uh, from the from the, this current year to next year. And then each subsequent year thereafter it increases by 3%. Um, with that, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Do you have any questions for Mr. Hare? Yes, Director Huffer. Yeah, I'm just sort of curious, Tom, the, you know, the, the dollar amount is so small, but is it, is it because this is a license agreement that it has to be approved by the board? Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Okay. 
they're actually yeah, you know, yeah, entering into like a property agree, uh, land agreement it has to be approved by the board. Uh, Director Cusworth. I thought the price was kind of high. <laughs> are these nice trails? How much? How much trail are we getting for sixteen thousand? Well, yeah, I mean, I well, get the one of them is one. actually feel like pretty much field right. and play field the whole park oh the whole park the yeah. whole park uh, Cal, oh okay we we do we uh fury is split into three different if you if you look at the, all the way on the left on the on the map that's fury um the i'd say 70 to 80 percent of fury Playfield is owned by edison okay. uh there's a little bit that's owned by the city of thousand oaks and a little bit of own, that's owned by yeah. caltrans we we don't own any of the property there so we do have other agreements with Caltrans and the city about that. So Fiore Playfield is the is the, the 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 top two ones, the first two license agreements, and then behind Los Cerritos, that's a, a big stretch of property all the way uh, you know, from uh, like the the 23 freeway all the way over to Herbs, and then we have uh, the, the the last one is the trail up uh, like a 10 foot wide trail from. Um, our property all the way up to uh, their property or through their property up to the power poles. And that helps us. It's a, a good trail connection. So, the, I mean, if for like, like for your question, like the only one that's a quote unquote, like a real, just a trail, just a trail would be the last one for $1,200 over five years. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you told me about the pure play field because I guess I was just looking at that and thinking a sewer pipeline, that seems a lot. Yeah, the sewer pipeline is so, the fourteen hundred dollars one, and then the rest of Fiori is eight thousand. Is the eight thousand yes. okay? Yeah, I I get that. Um, now that I'm looking at it a little closer, so okay, I guess I was thinking, well, no, you're doing it right. I thought, I mean, how many? You know, I, I've just wondered how many trails I've walked on that you know belong to Edison, and I was wondering if anybody ever paid for them. I mean, <laughs> it seems like I've walked on a lot of now, fire yeah, roads and other you roads. But. Yeah, and it, it gives us a lot of use, if, as you can imagine. And it's, it's actually kind of interesting looking at the the origins of Fiori. It's always kind of fun to read. But yeah, between Edison, Caltrans, and the city, they all said, well, what are we going to do with this excess? Because you couldn't really do anything because of the power poles. And they said, well, let's give it to the park district and see, or not give it to, let's, let's lease it to the park district and see what happens. And so it's been a very uh, um, a mutually beneficial uh, 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 arrangement for us, mm -hmm. them, and, uh, and of course the community is the one who's benefiting for, if you look at it, it's probably what, a couple thousand dollars a year for a, a, a pretty big park. Yeah. So are there big power lines along all of these areas? Yeah, if you, uh, yeah, uh, Fiori, it, it, it's, uh, Fiori, it's pretty much, it, that's why, oh. I mean, if, if you're looking at the, how uh, linear it is, those uh -huh. are, that, those are pretty much the power poles, uh, the high, uh, high voltage lines, and same thing for across, uh, behind Cerritos, same thing, it goes all the way across, and then the, 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 uh, the fourth one, the, the, up, up next to Sopwe, it's just our, it's a trail up to their power poles, but it allows us uh, better trail connections uh, within Sopwe Community Park. Okay, thank you. Director thank Lang. You. Yes, and not specific to this particular item, uh, but it reminded me of Northwood Park on the north side mm. uh, is a Southern California Edison Power Run. Correct. And initially, maybe that was just during construction, but we did have parking available off the street up in. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, we did have parking available. They, 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 they did not have a fence there. Oh. And so, as soon as we developed uh, Northwood, uh, lots of people decided. Yeah, because you're right. It, it's it's fairly open and flat, and then it starts to right. then it starts to slope up a little bit. So people were parking down there, and then Edison asked if we wanted to have a similar arrangement for them right. there. Um, and but we thought being a neighborhood park, there was sufficient amount of parking mm -hmm. either on the street because there, there was two cul-de-sacs that meet too. So if, even if you're not from the neighborhood, there's right. usually plenty of parking. So they decided they just fenced it off. Um, and if you remember the original Northwood uh, master plan contemplated uh, parking parking lots exactly on the that north end and that southeast end, 
and by talking to the neighbors, they were like, because uh, that was originally, like, let's get them off the street and from our, 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 in front of our house and, and onto the park. Right. And then we told them, that's eh, going to cost a lot of money. And they said, ah, let them park on the street. So, so it's been, it's been successful. So it's, yeah. we haven't had to need uh, on site parking, for lack of a better word, for, at Northwood. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? I had one question, Mr. Hare. Uh, how is the fee determined? Because it doesn't appear to be related to the size of the parcel. Yeah, uh, okay. another another interesting uh, historical question there. Um, the couldn't tell you how originally it was determined because uh, you know, if you go if you go back in the history books, it was just a it was like like a hundred dollars. It was very very low. Uh, they did a what they called a I think a fair market study. I think five years ago, the the the, the renewal before this, and they came up with just like you were saying it was it was a it was a usability of the land because of, because of, because of the power poles and the amount of acreage. So they take those and, and they actually had a professional come out and say this is what uh, it should be, uh, and actually we. The, the increase was fairly substantial from our previous ones, and we were able to negotiate with them that that this would be a better rate. So this is actually a little less, uh, actually quite a bit less than they originally proposed us what they said was fair market value. But it was they had a consultant who who came in and um, determined what the uh, the, the uh, fee should be. Okay, all right. Just out of curiosity, but thank you. Okay, we have a recommendation to authorize the general manager to renew the license. We have a motion for that. Director Cussworth. Uh, I move that we authorize the general manager to renew four license agreements with Southern California Edison from July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2026. Thank you. Do we have a second for that? I'll second that. Director Lang, thank you. And may we have a roll call vote, please? Director Nichols? Yes. Director Cussworth? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holt? Yes. Director Huffer? Yes. Thank you. Next is reports and announcements. We have five different items. There are collection of information in your packets. No real staff presentations. Any questions from the board on any of those? Yes, Director Lang? The comments and questions. And first of all, on 10A, park dedication fees, this is the first time in a long time that we've had more than maybe two at the most. There's mm -hmm. four. And then a question on the fourth one, the $16. Yeah, so if, if, if you uh, remember, one of, the, one of the new laws is for to encourage uh, development for ADU. So anything under 750 square feet is waived. And so we have, before that, we were getting anywhere from $1,600 to $2,000 per, per unit. Uh, so now the new 750 uh, square feet is waived. This one was 755 square feet. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so we did the calculation based on five square feet of a, uh, that he had to pay for. And we're like, oh, should we? We're like, well, that's the rule. I mean, yeah. where, where's the cutoff was 750, not 755. So right. $16. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Director Ling. I got to get it on page 305. I've got the, uh, what was my notes about aquatics? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, um, in the last paragraph on page 305, we talked about, um, Rochelle, you may be able to answer this, total of 28. Uh, year round staff, 16 uh, returning staff and 30 new hires. Do you recall how this might compare to our previous years? We have retained 16 according to this report. Is that a normal retention or? We've actually retained 28 that work year round and then 16 know, came back. I know so that. yeah, it's, um, and then they usually hire 30, so staff. this is typical. It's pretty typical, yeah. Okay, because I just, you know, returning staff is a good indicator that uh, they like their job. They like their yeah. Uh, D does a manager. really good job with retaining her staff and getting okay. folks to come back. 
but I will, I'll double check with her. I'll email her and just say, is 16 kind of normal or is that low for this year? But I, I haven't heard her, her and Xavier have done very good and they have gotten everybody on board and they've done their tests and their trainings and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So they've been pretty, feeling pretty good about being ready for the summer since we are opening both pools, this, yeah. the other two pools this summer. So perfect. Yeah, but I'll Thank email. Thank you. Any other questions? I had a question on that same item. It says there were tryouts and interviews. I'm wondering what were they trying out and interviewing for? To be lifeguards. So they actually have them do tryouts. They come in and they throw the buoy in, they rescue people, they do different things. They have to swim a certain amount of laps and, and show their techniques to be able to rescue people. They do board rescues and all that good stuff. So they do all of that. They think they do two days of tryouts and then they do an interview day. And then at the end of those three days, they pick who they're going to hire. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you. Real, real quick. Yes. Mr. Chair, yes, go ahead. I've had the uh, opportunity to be there at the pool while the tryouts were taking place a number of years ago. And they really put them through the uh, hoops. Is, that's not the right word. Through the buoys? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, it, it isn't, you know, just jump in the pool and here you get your lifeguard uh, mm -hmm. certificate. They really make them uh, perform. So it's an impressive to watch these young kids and they're serious too, obviously mm -hmm. it means mm -hmm. a job for them. Sure. Sure. That's a good. Awesome. Yep. And I mean, what better job than lifeguard? Everybody loves the lifeguard, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Director Cusworth. Oh, I was going to say I was a lifeguard one summer. Mm -hmm. It's a great job. Lifeguard swimming instructor. I had a tan that did not fade for two years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they didn't charge you for that either. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to department reports and we'll start with our parks division. Yeah, thanks, Chair Nichols, members of the board. Uh, five items tonight. Uh, the dog park project, um, we're doing some paperwork, getting some things ordered. Uh, we'll look to have a pre construction conference in the next couple of weeks, you know, but we're not going to, you know, obviously not starting the project until we can do some real work. We have some long lead items with the, the, the restroom and the shade structures. But and we'll try to keep the community well informed of what's going on through the website and uh, you know, on site signage, and then we'll also let you know what's going on. Uh, the skate park skate park project. We had a meeting last week with the focus group um, that got kick started again. We're really excited to see how that's going to progress. Uh, we've got some good ideas on how to how to keep it moving along, and again, we'll keep you informed with that one. Um, in we just had the uh, deadline for the double match for the CIP, uh, mm -hmm. you know, double matching grant and, you know, uh, for this year, um, broke all sorts of records, shattered records. We had a request for $491,000 from the Canary Rec and Park District. So the committee is meeting on that one in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've got to ask a few questions to some of the applicants. And then we'll uh, we'll make our um, our determinations, and the board will be seeing that as an informational item uh, probably on June third. Uh, also, the Kineo Community Park uh, project. I sent you guys the email that we we sent out. Uh, we've had lots of internal discussions and staff and presentations from the consultant. Uh, we met with the stakeholders two nights ago. I think, well, yeah, stakeholders two nights ago. And then we're going to, we have open public meetings on the 12th, uh, Wednesday the 12th and Saturday the 15th that we sent out mailers to, uh, notified the ACORN and all, and all other people who said they were interested in the project. Uh, and then as a result of that, uh, oh, in addition, it's the presentations about the design development uh, phase, uh, the conclusion of the design development phase. And right now we're in the draft uh, initial study and mitigated negative declaration process for the environmental analysis. Uh, so if everything goes smoothly, we hope to be before the board at the second meeting in June to adopt the MND and also uh, authorize uh, us to go to the next phase, which would be into construction documents. So we'll see how that goes. And then, uh, oh, 
And as much as you've enjoyed Andrew being here this evening, Andrew is going to do his uh, his 10 year capital improvement project uh, plan presentation in, in a couple of weeks. And uh, he's talking about, I think he's got a live band, <laughs> um, fireworks, surprise. a surprise, yeah, a surprise, <laughs> and uh, maybe a personal chef. Just saying, Ooh. he's trying to swing that. And then George, we're gonna to talk to you about a flyover too, okay? Yeah. <laughs> With that, I'm available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Hare. Any questions from the parks group? Yes, Mr. Hufford. Yeah, Tom, you, you mentioned the, the CIP, you said there were 491,000 in applications. Yes. I, I don't recall, what, what did we have budgeted for that? Uh, well, the, the, the budget will be presented uh, on the 20th. The, the first bite you'll have. So the, the, the budget has not been established for that. But yeah, I, can, I, I mean, I can say normally the, yeah. in a normal year, it's a hundred grand. We match a hundred yeah. grand and we advertise this was double match. So 200 is what we anticipated the district would, would match. We, but, yeah, yeah. And we anticipate, but like I said, but through the budget process, we right. can make um, make adjustments uh, because of uh, we're taking the entire capital uh, budget to you for, like I said, the first bite on March, May 20th, and then for adoption on, on June 17th. So those, this is, that's part of the process. So it, it's for the board to consider if that's something we should be doing. Okay. So these, these figures then actually show up in the next, in the next year's budget. Then. Yes. Yeah. It's next year's budget. So yeah, the application process is May 1st. Uh, we get a couple months to think about the budget, review the projects, and then they don't become effective. The budget doesn't become effective until July 1st. Okay, thank you. Yes, Director Lang. Yes, I meant to um, ask this earlier. Uh, in the di district-wide assessment at Caneo Community Park, we talked about the undeveloped um, properties. Now, does the Botanic Garden fall into undeveloped? open space for Caneo community or is that Hunter, where's it considered in the master plan? I think it's it's considered it's considered parkland. It's considered park, but I think it's uh, it's developed, developed or undeveloped. I think it's developed, it's developed yeah, parkland. Park yeah. Okay. Yes. In, impressive figures of uh, open space for Caneo community. You don't realize it. Oh yeah, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 a really yeah the, the only thing, the only undeveloped portion is really the south side yeah, between the park and the, the homes uh, right Hill. here off of St. Charles. Yeah. That's really the only undeveloped, I mean, and it leads a little bit towards uh, Mayflower Warwick and the 20 Oaks project, but those that's the only really undeveloped. And then on Janine Drive and that little corner there uh, on Janine and Gainsborough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mooney, um, can we make a request of your chef Particular food specialty or something like that. That's part of the surprise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, next we have our recreation division report. Ms. Callis. Thank you, Chair Nichols, members of the board. So I just wanted to follow up with you guys a couple things that you asked um, on April 15th of the board meeting. Um, I can't remember who asked that the rec highlights has a different date than the day of our meeting. And that is correct and purposeful. It is the day that it is turned in to a lien. So it is current as of that date. So when we get to the board meeting actual date, some of those things could be over or have other information. So just so you know, that was the date because it threw me off. I didn't know why it was wrong. Um, also, there was a question in regards to the senior Zoom classes in regards to if we would be continuing those or if they would be ending. We are going to be continuing Zoom classes with our seniors due to the lack of transportation for many seniors. We feel that there will probably be um, some opportunities for some Zoom classes to keep folks engaged. So um, I think the new world is going to be that it's opened up this Zoom world to us and that we will use some of those things. Um, kind of some other things that I just thought you guys might find interesting is um, we did some comparison a comparisons from the number of employees that we currently have compared to 2019. I think someone had asked about that last time. So we are currently 47, have 47 less employees than we did in 2019. 
we are also about two thirds of the way back to what we were doing in 2019 as far as staff hours. So we're we're making progress. We're almost where we were in 2019 before um, the pandemic. Uh, just so you know, the concerts are going. The concert uh, Memorial Day concert is going very well. We've actually. Um, sold out, but we are double checking because this is a new way and ticketing with everything. Um, many people bought more than one box, which is more than four people. So we are just confirming with folks. So far, we've had about five people that um, they were super glad we checked on it because they bought more boxes than they needed. So we've been able to adjust and put those boxes back up for sale and those boxes have been sold. So we have one more round next week to do. So there might be possibly a few more boxes that come available, but as of today before the meeting, we had um, no availability. I think I told you guys a couple uh, week or so ago that we were going to be opening our gyms, extending our hours, and we were going to be doing special gym rentals. Um, just FYI, nobody's really wanting to rent the gyms so for basketball. So we're going to be fiddling around with it, maybe open it up for pickleball, maybe open it for badminton, volleyball. So we're going to be playing around with it because we really like to get people into the gyms if they want to use the gyms. It's just we have to follow all the rules and the guidelines. Um, sports are back. So um, leagues are starting up. Currently, we have almost a thousand people enrolled in summer programs in the sports department, which they have been completely with nothing going on for a year. So we're super excited to be able to bring staff back, have more hours and all that good stuff and have adults back out doing sports. Um, Summer registration is looking really good, even though we're offering about 50% of the classes that we offered in 2019, the classes are filling up and we are hiring enough staff to actually have those classes. So we're gonna continue to try to hire staff and open more classes as there's need and waiting lists. So with that, I'm available for questions. All right, questions for Ms. Callis. Director Huffer. Yeah, Rochelle, I, I believe I recall from the, the previous meeting when you first talked about the concerts, we're, we're, you're sort of taking each concert one at a time and, and depending on how the state changes and the county changes that we may adjust how we're doing the mm -hmm. concerts as you know, July and then August mm -hmm. and September. So. Yes, sir. So yeah, so right now Memorial Day is kind of where it is, and then we'll see what happens with July 5th or June 15th, and and we'll probably we'll have to make decisions 30 days before because the tickets will go on 30 on sale 30 days before, so it'll always be 30 days. So it is possible that a new rule could come out and say, oh, you know, and then we would have to either refund everybody or say this one is the last one like this, and the next one will be different. Yep. Other questions? I had a question. With the opening up of fields for sports teams, and there was no summer leagues, there were no fall leagues, there were no winter leagues, so now everything is a spring league. I mean, how do you accommodate soccer, softball, baseball, rugby, you name it, whoever wants those fields, how do you possibly get all that done. I believe what Dana has done is normally the seasons are designated for certain sports. So whatever season that was, those are the folks that are getting allocated first for their, their sports. And then whatever's le left and available is going to anybody else who wanted, wants to do it. So she has a process and it seems like they're getting pretty full. So it's pretty I'm busy sure folks there. are just grateful to have a place to play, but I, I just can only imagine the chaos that was going through when all of a sudden the phones start ringing and yeah. online requests start coming in. It's just, how do you even deal with it? Because it's obviously out of sync with the traditional routine. Yeah, they stick with kind of the traditional routine and allocations of who would get what normally, and that okay. goes first, and then everything else is filled in with whatever anybody would want. Okay. And then the other question I had with all the seats sold for the concerts, are they showing up on StubHub? Not that I'm aware of. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if we've got to that level or not yet. 
I think someone uh, had bought too many tickets and they offered to sell them back to James. And he's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, with uh, that, manager. Oh, the, yes, Director Holt. Um, I'm, I'm not feeling too good to having, you know, I'm still having problems and seated here for but however long this has been. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm, I'm going to get up and try to move around. I'm going to leave this on my computer and maybe come back to it. But I, I just I just can't sit here any longer. Oh. That's that's fine. It's better for you to maintain your health. So by all means, you know, take a break, and uh, get okay. get better. Thank you. And I'm glad I could be here this way. Yes, and absolutely. Glad you could join us. Okay, I may be back. Who knows? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for checking in. Okay, management uh, services, Ms. Smith. Thank you, Chair and Directors. Um, you'll hear more from me later tonight, but right now I have no report and I'm available for questions. <laughs> Any questions on the presentation? Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right, we'll go to our general manager next. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Chair Nichols, members of the board. And I think if I could look back to the back of the room, Gabby, we still have someone waiting for public comment. So. Uh, Ms. Collins has been very patient and I'm sure she wants to speak, but um, as soon as I'm done, just so you know, and I know board member comments are still occurring, but we still have a public comment and we have a uh, need for a closed session tonight. So we still have a little more business, but in kind of wrapping up, just thought I'd mention that um, we, we have a letter from Capri talking about our insurance renewal, although they didn't get the final bill to us, they are letting us know that because of the history of uh, wildfire in California, the uh, we're kind of at the precipice of uh, many, many insurers bailing out of the state altogether. And the cost of like property and casualty insurance is gonna go up about 25%. And that's Ooh. a big driver because of the wildfire losses in the last couple of years. So what they're saying is if we get a bad fire year, like the year before, or the year before that, um, you may see us in California having to create something like the California Earthquake Authority, but for wildfires, because no one, will, no, there won't be anyone writing insurance. So that's where we are with um, insurance. Uh, Costco um, did do apply to soil binder to the arborist parking lot in Wildwood last week, which is great. You know, they took took care of the. Um, that it's been a really dry spring. So they did, they moved up the normal summer soil, soil binder application a little bit earlier. Uh, the city continues to march forward with the general plan. The planning commission had it um, and has made a recommendation or many recommendations and some uh, jump balls uh, to the city council. And the city council will be looking at it on May 18th and the 25th, they're making a, you know, they're planning on looking at over a couple nights. Um, so that's coming up, you know, a big deal for the entire community. Um, and then I just wanted to uh, say, um, you know, I missed the last meeting. Um, I, you know, I, I was out with my injury and I just, thanks for the nice notes and cards and, and tokens. I wanted to just say, <laughs> that uh, the, the Sopwe Trails Park and the kids and the users using it, great people. It was just so neat. Um, I, I, I spent a lot of that morning talking to a really interesting, helpful 10 year old and his buddy, you know, that were just riding and he was just this funny little precocious 10 year old who wanted to tell me all about life. And then there was a woman that we were talking to some some other uh, people. So it's a great fun place to be. And I got to enjoy it for a couple hours before I said, this is my last run. I'm tired then I'm done. So that, that's when it ended for me. But um, and when I, when I went down, a lot of those people were very helpful and helped me, you know, pull me off the track so they could keep riding. <laughs> <laughs> Get this guy off the track. Get this body off the track. Yeah. So, uh, uh. Just yeah, roll, but it, no, it was, it was great. The cactus there, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, then, and then I had our own staff because we were locked behind the gate in Sopwe. They, you know, Ranger, um, Ranger Rick was able to throw me in a truck and get me out of there. So, 
It was great. You guys have been great. Staff's been fantastic in terms of covering um, and taking on all the responsibilities. So it's really nice to know I'm gone and I'm not missed because it makes me feel the organization knows exactly what it's doing, everybody in it. It's really awesome. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah, and just uh, I will say we we missed you, but it was nice to know that we have staff available yep. to step in and, and able to keep things going. I think it's just a testament to you and, and your executive team that uh, you know everyone's on board and knows how to fill in and knows what to do and get things going. So thanks for uh, keeping us together. Okay, with that, we have directors of reports. Uh, Director uh, Huffer, I'll start with you. Any reports? I have nothing to report. Okay. Director Cussworth? Uh, not much, but with the museums, they're opening up. Uh, McCrary Ranch is going to start its movies. So it will, I think, August, September. So um, people are coming. It's all good. Very good. Director Lang, any reports? Yes, typical uh, MRCA and Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday's MRCA meeting was only like two hours and 15 minutes. The two previous ones were three hours and 30 minutes and three hours and 30 minutes plus. So yesterday was a easy one. I'm glad you think that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as far as me, the only thing I had this interim was the Thousand Oaks Planning Commission meeting and I spent six hours watching that. So it was, uh, I'll say mildly entertaining, but uh, it was interesting to watch that whole process. I'll try and check up with the city as we get a chance. Uh, okay, number 12, request for status reports and or items for subsequent agendas. Anything? Okay. And next we have items from the public. To our checking with our moderator to see how we stand with that. Okay, all right. So Ms. Collins, if you can hear us, we're trying to get you to, to, to be live here. So be patient. Sure, I can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. You're we, up. We can hear you. So uh, this is uh, items from the public. So just if you just state your name for us and, and uh, share your comments, please. Sure, uh, Barbara Collins from Thousand Oaks. And I was supposed to be present for item 7B and C, but I'm on a family vacation and missed it by five minutes. So thank you for letting me speak now. Um, Please go right ahead. Okay. So it's regarding the assessments to Rancho Conejo and Dos Vientos. And Tom here has been very, very kind and helpful explaining how it works. And I understand it was initially agreement between um, CRPD, the city and the developers and now that both communities are built out, we are being specially assessed exorbitant amount of fees. Our, I'm in Rancho Conejo and we hit three digits this year and that's when it caught my attention, what is going on. And plus we also pay an additional $20 for all the other parks in the district. So Dos Fiantos board is behind this. I've got 90 people in Rancho Conejo behind this that we would like to see our special assessments and our two homes, home subdivisions pooled with the rest of the residents in the district and everyone be equal because our parks are not for us exclusively. We have no priority of use. We can't call and reserve a pickleball court above everybody else, but we are paying more for them than everybody else who uses them. So it feels like the fair thing to do if people from teams from Camarillo can come and use these parks, people from everywhere can come and use them, but we have to pair, pay the burden of the maintenance for them. We would just love to have everything pulled together and split evenly among the district. It would be a one-time increase of $15 to everyone in the district just once, and then we're all even paying two to 5% increase yearly thereafter. So I'm just asking if, Possibly you guys in the city could get together and discuss that and maybe make that happen. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comments. We appreciate it. Sorry you missed us. I, I hope you're still enjoying your vacation, however. I am. Thank uh, you. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunately, because this is this is the items for the public, we can't really engage in conversation with you over this item since you've already covered it. However, <laughs> what I also want to point out is 
Uh, you're welcome to review the video of this, which will be on our website once it's complete and to see what actually was discussed. We had okay, nice great. staff uh, and not to be uh, too much alarmed because we still will have a public hearing on this item in June. Uh, so if there is some written documentation you want to share in advance of that, you're also welcome to be present at that meeting uh, or Zoom, however that works or anyone else is welcome to attend that. So the, uh, the, the process that we went through tonight was to uh, accept it or to get the preliminary report from the engineers and then to set the date for that uh, meeting and the intent of the board is to, you know, to, to levy those fees, but it will be at that public hearing where it actually takes place. So you're welcome to participate in that. So don't feel like you missed out on everything. Uh, and just also let, let you know, we do have your letter along with the names of folks. I have your signed letter here in front of me uh, with all the uh, mentioned uh, items that you mentioned. Uh, so we do have that as well. So we are aware of your concerns. And uh, again, we encourage you to either write anything else that you want to or be available for that public hearing where we can uh, hear you live and in person uh, during the comments for that particular section. Wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, and thank you for staying with us tonight and thank you for participating in the process. Sure, thank you. Okay, was there anyone else items from the public? Okay, thank you, Ms. Moderator, all right. Okay, and with that, we do have an executive closed session. So, um, Mr. Friedel, did you wanna escort us into that process? Yes, as I turn the page to the right description for that closed session item. Yes, we do have the need for a closed session, conference with labor negotiators, pursuant to government code section 54957.6. The district representatives will be uh, General Manager Friedel, Management Services Administrator Smith. Um, and we do have our, um, our Labor Council and Shelley available uh, by Zoom. Um, and this has to do with labor negotiations with Service Employee International Union, SEIU, for represented employees and salary schedules and fringe benefits for unrepresented employees. There is no announcement um, after closed session. Uh, so we would we will adjourn the regular meeting after the closed session. Very good. Okay, so we will depart for our executive closed session for this evening. And for those of you listening in or will be, uh, we will see you at our next meeting. So thank you for being with us. Good night.